Hey there, French Nibs again. Out here at the range today, doing a little bit of goofing around. It's absolutely a beautiful, beautiful day here, Saturday, upstate New York. Uh, I think it's right around 79 or 80. Just the tiniest little bit of wind, but perfect humidity, not any humidity at all. This is gonna be a fantastic day. I don't have any excuses except for myself today for how bad I shoot, but uh, we're going to go ahead and give another try to the day at the range uh, <clears throat> captain america challenge and uh, so far i've tried it with a couple of uh, foreign guns for the factory class did pretty good and uh, i did shoot it with one american gun for the vintage class now this one could almost qualify for the vintage class um, but it is uh going to be submitted for a factory class. Uh, this is a Savage Mark II. It is a, well, it's a heavy barrel. Uh, it's a very heavy barrel. I don't know if you'd consider it a bull barrel or, or just a heavy barrel, but uh, <clears throat> I'll give you a little flyby on it. It is uh, open and empty. So the uh, really interesting feature on this one, uh, more than anything, is the laminate stock with the Ward Burton signature on there. Uh, this one is a Ward Burton uh, limited edition Mark II. And uh, you can see how heavy the profile is on the barrel. Very heavy duty. Uh, I do have another one, another Savage action like this. It's actually a model 900 TR. And that one actually is a little bit heavier on the barrel on um, the barrel so the barrel on this one actually starts right here and it's got a step right there and then it tapers it doesn't taper but it steps down a little bit right there and then it's smaller um, the 900 tr that i have actually the barrel uh, mates up with the receiver and it's the same profile as the receiver all the way out to the end so Pretty, pretty massive barrel on that one. Unfortunately, that one is intended to be a uh, target shooting gun for uh, peep sights only. It does not have any provisioning for uh, any other sights or uh, scope mounting or anything like that. So, um, but this one is actually marked as a manufactured in Canada by Savage Arms Canada Incorporated so and imported by Savage uh, Westfield Massachusetts so uh, early on uh, mid 90s uh, from what I understand Savage actually bought um, Savage actually bought Lakefield Arms in Canada and uh, early gun so Lakefield actually originally designed the Mark I and Mark II target rifles, and I have a couple of uh, versions of that in my collection as well. I have a Model 92C, which is exactly like this. Uh, it's actually just about the same exact gun as this, with the same profile barrel and everything. And then I have another one that's a 91T that actually has a, a bull barrel like that uh, 900TR that I have. So. Um, those are both Wakefields, but uh, in 90, around 95, uh, if I, what I read is correct, the Savage bought Lake, uh, Lakefield and then started importing those guns with their name on it uh, and producing them as Savage Canada guns. <clears throat> and then, but shortly after that, they moved the production to the United States and started producing them here. So this is, this, that helps me date this gun to right around a 1995-96 type of uh, time frame from what I can find so but uh, we're gonna go ahead and shoot uh, I did test it with a, several different ammos uh, and it actually shot a magnificent set of groups with this Aguila this is Aguila rifle match competition um, I do have some Aguila target competition as well it did really well with those and it was actually shooting good with just a Gila Super Extra as well. So, but uh, I uh, 
shot one shot with this and it was just slightly to the right I took two clicks to the left and then I shot four shots into uh, one one ragged hole <laughs> probably less than a quarter of an inch less than three-eighths of an inch or yeah three-eighths of an inch in diameter so uh, hopefully it won't disappoint and do pretty good on this as long as I don't throw any flyers and I get around an 80 maybe a five or two get a little bit above an 80 uh, I'll be really pretty happy with it so um, but uh, we'll see how it does I have it topped off with a uh, Texas Precision Optics uh, scope uh, new uh, arrival in the garage here this is their model ZT 5 to 5 to 27 by 50 first focal plane scope and it is a really really nice scope uh, very very clear um, and I can tell that my camera's running down range <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started enough yakking I already sp <laughs> spent half the video just talking so but uh, this one has an accu trigger I haven't done any tuning on it. It's not a horrible trigger, but it it is a little little on the heavyish side. Oop, ran out of ran out of windage adjustment there. Let me Okay. First sighter. Ooh, a little low. Hopefully that was just a cold bore. I have, it's been 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes since I've shot it last. Oof. Hmm. All right. Well, we're just going to go for it. That's a three. Uh, I don't know. It was <laughs> literally it was shooting one ragged hole before I started up. I don't know. There's no wind. All right. But I, it's the way things roll. <laughs> Just a. Uh, I get things dialed in just like I like them and then get on camera and fall to pieces. It really is a really is a pretty stock. If I had to guess, uh, I would I would bet that it was made by Boyd's. I have several other guns that have Boyd stocks on them, including Savage's. Savage did buy stocks quite a bit from Boyd's. So, uh, all right, that's not bad. Down to the next row. So close to a five. I think it might have just cooled down because I had shot a number of groups all in a row. And the last two groups that I shot with this ammo, the barrel was pretty warm. And Oh man, so close. 
Settling down now, so okay. <laughs> Need to get a couple fives, at least one five to counteract that three that I think I got there. This is one nice scope though, really, really nice. Has a sunshade on the end out there. Don't really need it here. It would come in real handy at the other other range that I go to, but I really need to do a little tweaking on this. This gun is a, it's turning out to be a really nice shooter and I really want to give it the fighting chance. It has an accu trigger, but I haven't tuned it and it's probably around three and a half pounds right now. A little, little stiff. Ooh, that, that one might be a five. I believe that one's a five. Might be hanging out in the white just a little bit though. Darn it. Oh man, what happened there? <laughs> that's a five that's a five all day so so far it looks like i got maybe two fives and two threes so Oh my word, holy smokes, that's a two. That was, I would, that was a perfect, perfect squeeze and everything. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Those are frustrating when you when you know you had a good good aim, good squeeze, nice release, and it still ends up going out like that. That's just that's just frustrating. But it's just I guess a Gila ammo is like that sometimes though you just have random malarkey going on. Alright, another four. I take fours all day. <laughs> another three. I didn't even try any like real expensive ammo in this gun because it was shooting shooting that stuff like nobody's business. So I don't know. Maybe I'll have to try it again and I think that's another five. Flashes of brilliance. <laughs> Another four. All right. A couple more. A couple more rounds.
maybe I'll try this. I, I get, got some 10x now, picked up a good bit of 10x, so not a ton, but enough to keep me busy for the summer. All right, let's see if we can finish out, finish out strong here. So let's see, I got two more, and then I'll, I'll shoot those last couple at the, uh, up at the ciders just to, Another three. <laughs> Jeez. Another four. All right, I'm going to go to the uh, the scoring legend there. Shoot these last three for a group. I don't know. That's a three. So, all right, let me grab that target. We'll add that up, and uh, maybe we'll have to try it with some some better ammo. I mean, this Aguila is not terrible, but too many flyers for me. So, stand by. Alrighty, so I am back and. Uh, <clears throat> It didn't do as bad as I thought. Uh, still had some threes though, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but I think I got at least a couple fives. We'll take a closer look at these uh, as we go here. Um, boy, that one looks like. So number one is definitely a four. Number two is one I want to plug here. I think it's a, I think it's a four, but we'll we'll plug it here just to make sure. definitely a four number three is definitely a five number four is a four number five is a five that's nice uh, so number six did crack up into the four ring that was one I thought was a three number seven is a four number eight is a three number nine is a three number ten is a four 11 is a 4, 12 is a 4, 13 is a 5, that's definitely a 5, 14 is a 4, 15 is a 3, 16 is a 4, 17 is a 4, 18 is a 2, wah, wah, wah. I wiped out all three of my 5s, uh, uh, 19 is a 4, 20 is a 4, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21, 22 off. So 22 off is going to be a 78. That's, that is, that's not terrible. Not terrible for the factory class. Um, I think I can do better. I may give it another go with the uh, Elay 10X and uh, just see what it'll do. It's only money, right? <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Uh, 78 for the first try with the Mark II. And I'm definitely gonna give it another go with uh, some better ammo and see if it'll do any better. Go ahead and check out dayattherange.com. Thanks Eli for posting up all these great challenges. Um, I uh, definitely have a few more I want to try with this uh, challenge. So, uh, till next time, have a great day.